Hi, it's Greg from Tractor here. I thought I'd go over strut spacers and tell you everything you ever wanted to know but were afraid to ask. Probably our most common call we get on the tech support line is, hey, I ordered a two inch leveling kit and you sent me an inch high spacer. You sent me the wrong part. And so I'd like to cover that. Um, here's a two inch kit for an F-150. And here is a basic approximation of an F-150 front suspension. We've got our tire, we've got our lower control arm, our upper control arm, our strut, our piece goes on top, and I've got marked out here A and B. And the reason your two inch lift is not two inches high is because of this A and B here. B is the distance between the suspension pivot point and the middle of the tire, that'll be important in a sec. And A is the distance between that suspension point and where the strut mounts. As you can see here, A is much shorter than B, and it gives us a ratio. Now it's roughly one to two, but it's not always the same on every vehicle. And the other important thing to remember is that if we put a wider tire on it, we change B. So our ratios are always a little off, which brings us to the next point. Hey, this two inch kit is not exactly two inches lift on my truck. Well, that's controlled by a lot of variables. One of those is, have you moved B? Is your tire wider than stock? Besides that, other factors that affect it are the wheelbase of the truck, the weight of the engine, all sorts of things. If you'd like though, we do have extra plates we can send you so you can get a little bit more height. By putting an extra quarter inch plate on an F-150 with its ratio of one and a half to one, you get about three eighths lift per plate. The other thing we get called about is people have a truck with struts in the front and struts in the rear, but they have different ratios. For example, this is for a Honda Ridgeline. Here's two inches for the front, here's two inches for the rear. As you can see, they're greatly different sizes. On the front of the Honda, it's a McPherson strut suspension. It doesn't even have the upper control arm. This height is the height that lifts the truck. The back of the Honda, though, is just like this. So we use a smaller spacer. One other important point in strut spacer manufacturing and design is, are they made safely? When you look at our product, you'll see that there's two plates and there's a tube trapped between the two plates that can't come out. One of these welds was to break, your family would still stay safe, your truck would still keep driving, everything would be fine. I know that, of course, because we tried that in my truck when we first started. I put a kit in my truck, it was only tack welded together, and I drove around for six months with it broken. Nothing happened, it just made a little bit of rattling noise. Some of the copycat kits out there do things a little dangerously in my opinion. Here's a Chinese made copy of one of our kits. As you can see, the tube passes right through the plate. And it does it on both sides. What that means is all the weight of your truck is held by these little tiny welds. It's not the strength of the tube doing it, it's the strength of the weld. And that's pretty dangerous. If that weld breaks, these plates collapse together and you've got a problem. All of our strut caps have pressed in studs, not bolts. You'll love that fact when you're trying to get it up into the truck and you don't have a third set of hands to put the nuts and bolts on. We get all the rust off on our spin blaster. The shot painting of the spin blaster toughens the outside skin of the metal. And then we put a nice textured black coating on it. We have 30 colors though, so if you want something different, just ask. That's about all I have. If you have any other questions though, please feel free to call me at 1-888-660-5892. I'm on extension 8. Thank you.